Hello everyone and welcome to the Pixel 2's first security update for 2019. Today we'll be using Fastboot to update our rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the January security update. And before we begin, on your phone if you do have the Edge Sense gestures or the Active Edge mod by j to the 4 n installed, the module like this, you need to disable it before updating, otherwise your phone may end up in a boot loop, especially if you're running an old version of the module. So it's a good idea to disable it or to check for updates and update the module before you update your phone's system. But just for good practice and safety purposes, I recommend that you disable it before updating and then checking for updates after updating the phone. So with that being said, we can now continue. So we need to download a few things here. And the first thing is the SDK platform tools. Now you only ever need to have the latest version of this tool, so you don't need to always keep on downloading the same version if you already have the latest version on your computer. And I'll show you how to double check that later on in this video. But down here you can just download the latest version of the SDK platform tools for Windows or whichever operating system you're on. So you can agree and download the platform tools here. I'm going to save everything in one folder called Android just so we don't get confused or anything like that. And I recommend that you do the same thing as well. And the next thing you want to download is the factory image. We can scroll down to the Pixel 2 XL or Pixel 2 section, or you can just click on the link on the right hand side here. So I'll click on Walleye for Pixel 2 and scroll down to the end here and we should see the latest January factory image. Now if you do get an option for one that has a carrier, for example, the one in July of 2018, they had one for the T-Mobile users and one for the rest of the world. So it depends on which carrier you're on, you'll either want to pick T-Mobile if you're on T-Mobile or it might say Verizon or Telstra, otherwise you'll just want to go with a more generic one. But luckily this month there's only one so you can click on the blue download link and download that to our Android folder as well. And next up we'll also want to make sure that we have the latest version of the TWRP image and also TWRP installer to flash TWRP onto our phones. And I'll be doing that in this video. So just head over to your download page. Of course, this one's for Walleye, so just the Pixel 2, and this is the Pixel 2 XL. So once you have downloaded the latest version of the TWRP image and the TWRP installer, the TWRP installer is optional, so you don't have to download that if you don't want to install TWRP on your device permanently. And last but not least, you'll also want to download the latest version of Magisk, I recommend using the beta version, but since they're both the same at this point of time, they're both version 18, so you can just download the latest stable or beta version of Magisk. And once you have everything downloaded, you should have these five files. So the first one is Magisk, the next one is the platform tools, then we have our TWRP image, and then we optionally have our TWRP installer, and last but not least, we also have our factory image here. So the first thing we're going to open up is the platform tools zip file and extract the entire platform tools folder outside just like that and give it a second to copy over just like so everything in that folder and we also want to open up our factory image here open up the folder within our factory image and select the image bootloader and radio images outside like so these three files we won't be using the scripts here but you can choose so if you'd like to But anyways, once you've extracted all the images, you can click on the close button and then we can head over to our device here. So before we reboot our phone into the bootloader, we'll need to copy over the Magisk and TWRP installers over to our phone. It's always good practice to do so. So you come over here and tap on Android system charging this device via USB, tap on that and change it to file transfer. And on your computer, you should see your phone pop up if not, you can open it up here and copy both the Magisk zip file, the latest one, and the TWRP installer into your internal storage. And once you have those two files there, you can go ahead and we're going to reboot our device into the bootloader. And to do that, we're going to make sure our device is plugged in with the cable here. And then all we need to do is hold the power button. And when I tap on restart and when the screen goes black or turns off, we're going to hold the volume down button so we can get into the bootloader. So I'm going to tap on restart and get ready to hold it. I'm going to start holding it now and I'm just going to wait until my phone boots into the bootloader. It may take a while to do so, so just keep holding it. Okay, so finally we're in. Okay, so now we can go back to our computer here 
and from there we need to go into the platform tools folder this is where you can see adb.exe and the fastboot exes now in here you can either now in here you'll need to open up a command prompt window or a terminal window or a PowerShell window here so we can use these programs that are located inside the platform tools folder and to do that on Windows you can head up to the address bar here click on it and then type in CMD and hit enter and that'll also bring up a command prompt window to the platform tools folder alternatively you can also right click and hold shift at the same time and you'll get an option to open the PowerShell window here so you can do that as well but I'm going to use my console emulator app I do recommend this it's very useful very handy and this is how I'm going to do things so it's going to be the same mine's just a fancy command prompt if you will and once you have this open just go back to our Android folder with all the other files located in there and then we want to type in this command in our command prompt window we're going to type in fastboot double dash version like so and you can see that jumped a little bit but here we are running fastboot version 28.0.1 and some numbers on the end. You want to make sure that you do have the latest version, it's very important. And if you have a version that is below 28.0.1, I recommend that you go ahead and download the latest version again and check your environment variables to make sure that when you say fastboot double dash version, it is the one that is actually coming out of the ones we newly extracted and not some old installation that you may have done a while ago. And if this command doesn't run at all, you have a very old version of fastboot and you should update it immediately before you continue but once you have that sorted out we can go ahead and see if our device is connected and we can do that by typing in fastboot devices and you can see the serial number pop up which means our device is connected successfully and we are ready to flash the images we're going to update our bootloader image and we're going to do that by typing in fastboot flash bootloader leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in our bootloader image and hit enter and once that is done we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader for it to take effect so we can type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter and once our phone is back into the bootloader we're going to update the radio image and we're going to type in fastboot flash radio we'll leave a space after the radio and drag in the new radio image and hit enter and once that is done we're going to reboot back into the bootloader again so you can press the up arrow key on your keyboard to access the previous commands and hit enter on that and once we're into the bootloader once more we can now issue our update command and we can type in fastboot double dash skip dash reboot type in the word update and leave a space after that now this will prevent our phone from restarting automatically after this update so we can reroute it again and then we can hit enter and give this a second it's going to extract all the files out and flash them to our phone if you do experience any issues flashing such as you know unable to send sparse file try rebooting your phone into the bootloader again and replugging the, in the cable and try the command again and once that's done we can now boot the twrp image to reroute our device so i'm going to type in fast boot boot and leave a space after the word boot drag in our TWRP image for our device and hit enter and our phone should boot into TWRP you also need to decrypt your data partition and that is just your lock screen passcode pattern or password and then from here we're going to tap on install locate the things that we copied over earlier uh, in my case, I'm going to be installing the TWRP recovery to my device. So if you want to do that, you need to flash the TWRP installer first. So swipe to confirm that. Otherwise, if you don't wish to install TWRP, you can straight up flash Magisk and then restart your system. Since I'll be installing the installer anyways, once you've done that, you want to reboot your phone back into the recovery just to make sure that the installed TWRP works and we'll, hopefully the touchscreen works as well when we do boot into TWRP I did have that issue on my Pixel 3 but that was solved with a custom kernel so you may have to flash a custom kernel before you can use TWRP uh, without booting it from the computer in this case you don't have to which is good so you can see that TWRP is working just fine 
and from here we can flash Magisk to finish it up. So I'm just going to locate Magisk and confirm that flash, and just wait for that to finish flashing. And once you've done that, you can tap on Reboot System, and our phone should turn up into Android quite soon, rooted, and with all our data still intact. So we'll have a quick look after our phone turns on, and we'll just fast forward it from there. Alrighty, our phone has turned back on, which is good. Our wallpaper is intact with all our icons there, so it's just going to start up our device. And let's have a look at our Magisk Manager. You can see that we are on the latest version of Magisk, and we can also check for our safety net status here, and everything is passing as it should. Now with regards to the Active Edge mode, you'll want to make sure that it has been updated to support the latest version of Android that you're on, and you can do that by following him on Twitter, or just waiting patiently on the XDA thread, but when the update does come up, it should say updated on today's date, or tomorrow's date, so the 9th of January. This one is for the older version from December, so if you see that, don't download that and enable it. Your phone won't turn on, and you'll have to uninstall Magisk, or at least get rid of the module uh, for your phone to turn on again. But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any other questions or queries, please feel free to leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But even better yet, if you use Discord, we'd love to see you on our Discord server. A link is also down below, and you can ask questions on and also ask for help there as well, anytime. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy flashing.